Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good out there. Firstly, apologies about the irony of not having the best quality to film this video because the camera I'm filming is the camera I normally film with. <laughs> so I'm having to use an Insta360 one hour to record this. But anyway, this is a little update on my little digital SLR rig that I showed a video on a while ago making a manual release button so I could autofocus it without having to try and find the button on the top of the camera. I can just press a little button under here, which I'll show you a little bit in a minute. Um, I just thought people might find it interesting to know why some creators use something like this opposed to what's in the middle of it, one of these. Just, you know, a digital SLR. Now this isn't uh, the one I normally film with, this is my 600D, I've got a 90D in my rig. But this can do the same thing basically, because the camera, it's just, it's just there, you know. I will make it clear that everything you see here, I bought myself. There is no product placement, no hidden promotion going on here. Everything purchased my money. Uh, this is a small rig, uh, digital SLR carrier. Obviously it's got twin handles and a carry handle at the top. And you've also got the baffles or the shades, whatever you want to call them. Um, now, the reason why people use this over this is multiple reasons. For me, one, you get a much nicer image quality if you use proper shades over your lens. You can use lens hoods and it will help, but if you're using a particularly wide lens, then you've got to have a shade that's really wide. That means it needs to be really big. If it's connected to the end of the lens of the actual camera, the problem you have is that it ends up showing up in the view because of the vignetting, so it's not ideal. That's why having one of these, uh, which you can move forwards and backwards to adjust for whatever lens you've got, is really helpful and what it will do it will slightly dehaze the image if you can imagine that if you've got a filter on the camera as well it makes it even worse or if you've just got the glass the light is going to come through the glass and it is going to reflect up and down a little bit within that glass and that gives you this sort of a, a bit of a haze makes the image look a little bit less contrasty um in my experience well this really helps that so it blocks the lens from daylight from you know normal lights we have strong lights i've got in this situation like here uh, and it does increase the image quality so it's worth having that on the front it's worth having its size um, obviously the cage itself gives you two hands to hold with so if you want to film something you can be a bit more steady with it you've also got the option of holding it from this which isn't stabilizing it but if you hold it in the right way and you're smoothly moving along it helps you do tracking shots and low shots so this the rails the handles and this carry handle all come with the small rig mount the things i've added on top of this and modified uh, is well number one i for audio i use the rode wireless go two system which the little mics you'll notice everyone has got on their chests in videos these days and you didn't notice it before now but you're gonna notice it after this point everyone is using these little things they're not cheap but they are absolutely fantastic you get two of them with a receiver uh there's lots of benefit i'm not gonna go through you know the full review of this thing i would say i do one but there are good ones out there they work i'm happy with them um so you know that's what i can say but they're expensive so this allows me to have two mics going to the camera wirelessly. Uh, so if me and Reno are doing our Q&A, for instance, you'll notice we've got one of these on each and I can split the audio and try and boost things. For that reason, and I hope you can see this, I've made a little brass clip which allows me to just hook the receiver of the Rode 2 on here and allows me to see you know, what's going on because I've got a display on here that shows you what's going on with the mic. Uh, I've already mentioned, you may be able to see under here a couple of buttons. These are basically a manual release for the shutter one of them will actually release the shutter as in a full press the other one will only do a half press i have a video making that which plugs in with a remote control lead over here the benefit of that is if i want a mid shot autofocus to make sure i'm okay i can just press this which is naturally at your thumb when you're holding this thing opposed to down here on the camera having to move your hand from here and then back up here is really annoying having it right there is really handy okay so the next thing is this thing which is absolutely great so normally these cameras, I say this is 90D, runs off of a battery of this size, which is, uh, let's see, this isn't an official Canon, 2000 milliamp hours. You can put two of these in a battery grip. Uh, battery grip, if you don't know what that is, is one of these. It's an extra section that actually attaches onto the bottom of the camera. It's not, it's not actually part of the camera. And that, I'll fully show you. See, that's like the, the battery that goes up in the camera. And the benefit is you have a drawer which allows you to put two batteries in it which is good for filming because you need the batteries because you know cameras eat power when it comes to filming 
Well, two of these is, is a good amount of time, but it, it's a bit annoying if you've half filmed a video and then you go back to it the next day and you realize you've only really got half charge and you're probably gonna run out, so you're gonna need to, well, you can get this thing, which, uh, all right, let me show you. Take out the normal, oh, I can't. Okay, so imagine in here, you have what looks like a battery, but it's actually hollow and it's just got contacts on it with a wire. The wire for that runs up here and you've got this little dock unit. And then if you do film or video or anything, you'll probably recognize these batteries. These are a, a knockoff of a Sony battery. Uh, no, well, they're known as, what are they, NPF 960s. There's also 900s. The, the last number basically tells you how long the battery is, I believe, or is it, no, it's height. Um, so the base is the same, but the height's more when you get more power out of it. Well, obviously that clicks onto here and that powers the battery. Well, as I mentioned, the standard ones are 2000 um, milliamp hours. This is 7,200. And these, you can have two or three of these in your bag and it's the equivalent of like six, seven or eight of these. Again, this is a third party battery as this is. I, the only official batteries I have for any of my equipment are the ones that came with it and GoPro because they're evil. They basically put code in so you can't use non-branded uh, batteries. Just, just not get into it. There is also a power adapter plug in here. So if you wanted to plug in permanently, you can do that nice and easily without having to have something plugged into the bottom of the camera. You know, it's all contained. So another thing about this, I like everything to be contained because obviously there is quite a lot of given protection for the camera itself to be hidden in the middle of here, bolted down, well, bolted, screwed down with its tripod mount. It's not going to take any hits from the side. If you drop it on the floor, the cage is going to take the hits. You'd have to drop it on its back for the camera to take its hits. And actually, if it was on a hard, flat floor, it's never touching it. So it does protect your camera to a point, but it also means that you can just grab everything in one go. It's all attached to this. There is a tripod screw underneath, so you can attach it to a tripod. I normally put a quick mount on there so I can just attach it and detach it off of my tripod. Although this has now got to the heft that I'm actually going to have to uh, get a larger head because this weighs too much that my head can't take it. Head of a tripod, that is. The last thing you may notice is this. Uh, this is a handmade little sunshade. I made out of aluminium that just literally, with pressure, sits on top. Uh, this is an old Sony phone, which I use as a remote screen. You can buy proper remote screens for several hundred pounds, or you can buy a phone holder with a small rig adapter, which attaches on here so I can move this screen wherever I need. Uh, the reason I've got this, by the way, is because when you uh, open the camera's own screen and you try and face it towards yourself, yeah, you, you can't see it because it's hidden by all of this. And you do need to be able to see the screen when you're filming uh, just to make sure you're in shot because if it saves you, like every now and then I've had to go back and check because I can't see what I'm shooting here and make sure this is all in shot. This can also spin and should I need to or wish to, I can take it off and have that, you know, handheld and put it wherever I need. If I'm filming something top down in here, rather than having to look at the screen high up in my view, I can put this down on the desk at the back of the wall and I can see the preview. Sure on this it's delayed compared to what you get out the camera one of the proper screens little touch screen stuff but you can control the camera fully from here change modes focus where you want turn the focus on and off take pictures start videos stop videos all of it can done be done from the phone with it connecting directly to the slr itself dslr what i can list in my amazon store i will list so if you want to look into any of the stuff that you see here uh, or any of the other equipment I use. I have an Amazon store and I have everything listed there, there from like most cycle stuff I use, computer equipment, camera equipment, tools, and even like everyday stuff like EDC knives and things that I own and really like. And I think I can happily say that 99% of the stuff that's in that store is stuff I've owned, used, and experienced. There may be a couple of products which are facsimiles of something I had. They're not the exact same make. But yeah, I don't just, you know, like some creators will do is just make a store, fill it with loads and loads of stuff with no knowledge if it's good or not, and then hope that people buy it to get that little kickback. Obviously, I'm, I'm happy to get a kickback, but only on equipment that's worth spending your money on. Everything that's here is, for its price, is perfectly fine. This new amount is plastic. I would rather that was metal, but I could have spent more and got a metal one. Didn't seem to need to. As I say, the camera in the middle is a Canon 90D, but that really has nothing to do with this, any of Canon's SLRs that fit in this current space would work with this system. Uh, but yeah, you can see it's very handy. It is bulky, but it does all break down, completely breaks down, and it really does help up the quality of your videos.
Obviously these rails at the bottom can be slid forwards and backwards. Oh, I do also have, which I haven't got here, is a, a clamp that attaches to here and I've got a bent piece of aluminium that gives me like a shoulder stock so I can hold it into my shoulder and film very steadily with the top of my body uh, should I need to. But honestly, most of the time this is sat on a tripod. Um, which might seem like overkill because I say you can just shove that on but with all the extra bits that are on here it all is there for a reason and having it together in one lump just makes it much easier less likely to lose stuff and just nicer to work basically hopefully if you're into cameras and filming and stuff you'll find this interesting and if you're not you might now understand why we use big whacking things like this it's not just to try and look fancy it actually all has a purpose uh yeah if you like the video please hit the like button subscribe if you're new here although i normally make motorcycle content so um yeah but actually over this winter because of some circumstantial changes which are going to lead to good things I'm going to have a series coming this winter of doing basically some DIY and setting up a studio stroke computer setup, desk setup, loads of stuff. Now that could all start in a week's time or two weeks time or three weeks time. I don't know because it's waiting on basically property stuff to happen. And as we all know at the moment, how long is it going to be? No, as long as it is. Massive thank you to my Patreon supporters as always. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.